The term survival horror gets thrown around a lot these days. I don't think it's intentional, I think that it's just become the consensus to list certain games as a survival horror and therefore everyone else just cites the consensus. The most recent example of this is We Happy Few, which I've seen on many websites referring to it as an upcoming survival horror game. The first 3D survival horror game was Alone in the Dark. This game paved the way for Resident Evil 1 and paved the way for a kind of golden age of survival horror during the PlayStation 1 era, where you could see games like Dino Crisis, Silent Hill 1 and Parasite Eve 2. Parasite Eve 2 is a little bit on the fringe of survival horror and that's the problem with survival horror games. There is a, a very fine line between an action game and a survival horror game, which is where part of this confusion is coming from. Coupled with the fact that what a survival horror game is now has changed. The old survival horror games all looked pretty much the same and they had most of the same elements. Elements like scarce resources, having to evade the enemies, playing as a vulnerable character compared to the enemies you're fighting and having weapons that are barely good enough to defend yourself with. But now we have the new kids on the block like Alien Isolation and Seven Days to Die. I believe with hindsight these games will be seen as real game changers for the survival horror genre. So whenever I seen We Happy Few coming out I thought maybe the genre had changed again. Turns out that the game is just not a survival horror at all and has fallen victim to being mislabeled. So I wanted to settle this once and for all and bring you my top 10 games mislabeled as survival horror. I'm going to start with We Happy Few at number 10. It's by no means the least mistaken as a survival horror, but I talked about it a little in the preamble, so I'm going to start here. I first heard of it actually on a list for the top 10 anticipated survival horror games. I never really seen any gameplay in motion, and I only really seen a few screenshots that looked really colourful. So I took to Twitter and posted up saying that when I seen We Have A Few listed as a survival horror, it makes me sad to see that how far removed the genre has become. I was very surprised when Compulsion Games came back to say that they are completely different genres. They went on to say that it's not a survival horror game and they have never said it's a survival horror game and asked me where I've been looking. I sent a few examples of where people have been talking about it as a survival horror and uh, that they're misrepresenting the game and Compulsion Games pretty much just said that it's frustrating for them uh, no matter how much they post about it. It's easy to see how you can be confused by this. The game is listed as a survival game. Um, it also gets mentioned as being a horror game, so I can see where people are getting mixed up here. I've since watched gameplay of it and I, I'm pretty positive that it's not a survival horror game. Number 9, Bioshock. Bioshock is a sci-fi action game and it's a first person shooter. I've seen it quite a few times on survival horror game lists. Why is it mistaken as a survival horror? Maybe because the first System Shock game is hailed as a survival horror. So maybe everyone assumed that it's the same could be said for Bioshock. A bit like how people think that Resident Evil 4 is a survival horror because 1, 2, 3 and so on are survival horror games. I'm not even sure Bioshock is a horror game. I certainly didn't feel too scared when I was playing it. Bioshock doesn't have scarce resources or any more than any other first person shooter game would have. You don't have to evade the enemies um, and you don't play as a vulnerable character or anything like that. You just don't see a lot of the what I would call golden rules of survival horror. Incidentally I should say that I've never played the original System Shock so I can't really verify if it's a survival horror. But I am going to play the remake made by Night Dive and uh, I suppose time will tell on that game. Number 8, Alan Wake. In an interview for Game Informer, Remedy said that We definitely feel that this is more of a thriller than a horror title. They go on to say that we have the psychological thriller and at the same time this is a cinematic action game. I'm always very dubious about any over the shoulder camera game being called a survival horror game. Precision aiming is an attribute of the action genre and I've only really seen it done in survival horror in games like Alien Isolation and Cold Fear. But the only difference is in Cold Fear, 
the boat rocked back and forward so it made it pretty difficult to precisely aim at your enemies and that was really its saving grace. So for me Alan Wake just doesn't have enough survival horror elements to counterbalance the action elements. Plus Remedy have already said that it's not a survival horror game. But that's not to say that it isn't a very good psychological horror. Number 7, back in 1995. Ironically this game about survival horror games isn't a survival horror game itself. Ammo in the game is plentiful, health is too. So the scarce resources rule has been broken. There's no run button. Yes you can invade the enemies, but it doesn't feel like there's any urgency. You practically walk past them, which is quite awkward and destroys any sense of tension in the game. You don't really play as a vulnerable character either. You're fully stocked with ammo and health and you can easily kill the monsters, so there's nothing really vulnerable about that. But this isn't really a game, it's a conversation with the developer to the player. You would know what I mean if you completed the game. So just as a warning, if you are thinking of picking this game up, it's a game filled with references to classic survival horror games, but don't expect it to be like those games other than superficially. Number 6, Left 4 Dead. Some might find it strange that this is even on the list, but it does come up quite a lot. Wikipedia lists it quite clearly as a survival horror, not that Wikipedia is to be trusted on these matters, most of the games on this list are listed as survival horrors on Wikipedia. In doing research on this video I came across forum posts where people said things like, this game is about surviving and it's set in a horrific situation, therefore to me it is survival horror. A game having survival elements isn't subjective, it either has them or it doesn't, however Fear is subjective. You could be afraid of spiders and therefore the Scutella parts in Zelda Ocarina of Time could be your worst nightmare. So you could say that those parts for you make Zelda a horror game. On the other hand you can't say, I feel like Ocarina of Time is a survival game or to me Ocarina of Time is a survival game. You can't do this because survival elements are not unique to you. So if you want to convince me that Ocarina of Time is a horror game, go right ahead, but you'll never convince me that it's a survival horror game. And the same could be said with Left 4 Dead. Another argument I come up against is, oh well the resources are scarce because you have to look for bullets. Firstly I should say that the resources are no more scarce than any other game where you have to pick up ammo, like Gears of War or Call of Duty. And secondly, these so called scarce resources are completely nullified when you consider that you can't evade the enemies in Left 4 Dead, you have to kill horde after horde of them. Which also means that you're not a vulnerable character and you do have powerful weapons. So Left 4 Dead is just like any other action game with that respect. If you want to call it a horror game go right ahead, but there are no survival elements that can be found here that aren't in countless other first person shooters. Number 5, Resident Evil 4. People can't just call a spade a spade, and I find it infuriating. Resident Evil 4 is an action game. It's a very good action game, but it's an action game. It's an action game, is an action game, is an action game. Ironically, Wiki lists it quite clearly as a survival horror game, but when you read the gameplay section of the article it says, the gameplay focuses on action and shootouts involving crowds of enemies in open areas. Yet nowhere in the game's genre does it mention action. It's no secret to anyone that Resident Evil 4 is completely different in gameplay to the earlier Resident Evil games. When will people realise that gameplay is what defines a game's genre? Resident Evil 5 does have parts on the wiki page where it talks about this departure from survival horror, but it still lists the game as a survival horror. I'm not even sure I would class this as a horror game. I was never scared playing it and if it's not a horror game is it just a survival game? No it's neither. It's an action game. I would think that most people would categorise Resident Evil 5 as an action game and if you're one of those people, please realise that the gameplay in Resident Evil 5 is exactly the same as Resident Evil 4. So by default both of these games are action games. Number 3, Eternal Darkness. Now this is a game that I actually have very strong evidence as to why it's not a survival horror game. And again this is a perfect example of probably one of my favourite horror games. One that actually made me feel physically sick and disoriented when I first played it as a kid. But just because it has brilliant 
psychological horror elements. It has nothing to say that it's a survival game, and I can prove this. In an interview for Escapist magazine, Dennis Dyack, who is the producer and director of Eternal Darkness and president of Silicon Knights, he said, Eternal Darkness was something that kind of came together at a point where there had been a lot of horror games, specifically survival horror, and we wanted to create something that was in the horror genre, but not categorised as survival horror. So just like with We Happy Few, when the producer and the director are saying that it's not a survival horror game, you should really listen. Number 2, Dead Space. Dead Space has the perfect environment for a survival horror game, but it's only spoiled by one thing, the gameplay. The weapons and the melee is overpowered, so you can easily kill hordes and hordes of enemies without really breaking a sweat. These enemies also drop health and ammo, so the resources aren't very scarce. For me, the worst element in spoiling the survival horror is that you have a button that basically just freezes the enemies and you can just walk right past them or shoot them. This is like having an auto dodge button. But not only do you have a freeze button in the game, you have a where to go next button. If you ever get lost, you can just click a button and the game tells you where to go next. So we no longer have maze-like environments. I actually really like Dead Space as an action game uh, with horror elements. It just doesn't have any survival elements. The number one misunderstood game as survival horror has to go to Evil Within. Market it as Shinji Mikami's return to survival horror. This is the least understood of all games on the list. The best way to find out what people think of a game is by doing a poll. So let's take a look at this poll from two years ago on GameFAQs. It asks a very simple question, is Evil Within a survival horror? Roughly 200 people took the poll and over 80% said that yes, it is a survival horror game. I don't know whether those numbers are so high because Evil Within was marketed as a survival horror so everyone just thinks that it is one, or that a lot of people who played it have never truly played an old school survival horror game. Evil Within is a psychological horror just like Alan Wake and Eternal Darkness, except Eternal Darkness was much better because the psychological horror wasn't scripted. I'll explain a few reasons why there are no survival elements in Evil Within. You have to kill the enemies in at least 90% of the game, which makes having to evade the enemies and any illusion of scarce resources redundant. I say illusion because the game always gives you the resources you need to get past each chapter. The hiding mechanics in Evil Within are completely pointless, saying as you have to kill all the enemies. Play Alien Isolation or Hunting Ground if you want to see your hiding mechanics done right. In those games you have to hide from the enemies because you couldn't kill the enemies. Let me try a thought experiment that might make you understand why Evil Within is not a survival horror. Ask yourself one question honestly. When you see an enemy in Evil Within, what's the first thing that comes to mind? 99% of the time the answer is, I need to kill that enemy. Because that's what you have to do in the game, and that's your mindset while playing the game. Fight or flight kicks in, and most of the time the game forces you to fight. And that's an element and a mindset of an action game. When you play as a vulnerable character compared to the enemies you're fighting, your instinct is flight. Ask the same question but replace Evil Within with Alien Isolation, Hunting Ground, Forbidden Siren, Resident Evil 2 and Silent Hill and the answer is not to kill the enemy in front of you but to avoid the enemy in front of you. In games like Resident Evil 2 you either had to avoid them because you didn't have enough bullets to fight them or you wanted to avoid them because you wanted to save your bullets for later on in the game. And in games like Alien Isolation and Hunting Ground, you had to hide or avoid the enemies because you simply can't kill them no matter what you try. This does not happen in Evil Within. You assume the role of the hunter in Evil Within, killing all the enemies you come across. There you have it. 10 games mislabeled survival horror. Believe me, there are more than 10, but those are the ones I come up against all the time. This might not seem like a big deal, but I fear that we'll completely lose survival horror if things continue the way they are. There's a theory that Neanderthals didn't go extinct. They just interbred with humans so much that there were none left. And I fear this will happen with survival horror games. If people don't understand what survival horror really is, it will be swallowed up by action games with horror elements and will never return to its former glory. If you feel there are some games I've missed out or you want to chat about survival horror games, 
then please feel free to leave a comment below. I would love to hear from you.